All right, so today we are going to talk about uh, surface tension and surfactants. These are both pretty pretty important to what we're doing. Um, and generally life itself really works because we have surface tension with water. Uh, I mean, as it's obviously it's important to the spider here who's, you know, standing on the water looking as though he's floating and, and he is floating. But the reason he's floating is because he's not breaking the surface tension. So a boat doesn't work like that. Like a boat sort of sits below. So if you've got a boat in the water, it's actually sitting, it's broken the surface tension and it sits below the water. Whereas the spider, he would sit on the water. Oh, so these are the dot points we're addressing here today. Um, we've got the surface tension, uh, what it does in terms of forces, and what a surfactant is, and how that's going to affect our, our ideas of surface tension. Now we've, we've looked at surfactants, um, but we'll, we will come back to that, I promise. So, Basically, when we're, we're talking about surface tension, sorry, when we're talking about surface tension, um, we're going to relate this, the idea of surface tension, to the particle model. Um, so, very quickly, surface tension, um, so it's the tendency. of the surface of a liquid, it's not just water, to resist an external force. So here we have a needle sitting on top of the water. Um, the force, obviously because it's got this shape, the force is pointing out like this. And that's counteracting that. And if you added these two forces up the way a physics student would, so you'd have this one plus that one, the angle here would counteract itself and you would have something like this, which is the direct opposite of that, and that's why it's balanced. It sits there. Okay? Now, so generally, this is due to what we call cohesion forces. So, between the particles over a short distance, it's, it's an attractive force. Okay? They, it pulls them together. Now, here's the surface of your water, okay? And above this, you have all sorts of air particles um, and so forth. There's all the air particles in there. Now, the air particles above it, there's the forces here, they're very, so the forces here are very attractive and they pull them together, whereas, and it's less attracted to the air, okay? So it, it pulls in tight here, whereas the air itself is less attracted to it. But they're still weak forces, and that's why you're able to push through it. They, the inward attraction gives you the surface effect. Okay, now the surface effect is what we call surface tension, and that's what stops these from just heating up and boiling off. This happens when we when we heat water up. You know, these particles they start to vibrate. So this particle will start to vibrate more and more, and eventually it'll vibrate so hard that boom, bounces off. But at lower temperatures, the cohesion forces are stronger than the vibration of the particles, and they stay together. Now, basically, this is a thin, transparent skin on the top of it. 
Now, this, so, okay, so, cohesion forces, stronger between water particles than the air above. This is also why droplets of liquids tend to be spherical, and they're not always spherical, and that's not a sphere, but they, they can be spherical. So, these cohesion forces, you can see with the red ones, the, the red ones that are around the outside here, they've given you this shape, and they pull in. So, if you look closely at a drop, it's rarely this down shape, it's usually, it, it pulls in underneath. Now, also, alternatively, if you have, if you have something like mercury, that one, here's your flat surface, you'll have mercury, we'll draw it in black, but it will just give you a proper sphere. Now, that's because mercury's surface tension is much greater than H2O's surface tension. So, what that tells us is the greater the surface tension, the closer to a sphere a drop it will be. Now, if we go on a little bit more, the opposite of a the opposite of a cohesion force, well not the opposite, but you've also got these other things where so a cohesion force is where the particles stick together, you know? Then you've got an adhesion force. An adhesion force is where the particles stick to the surface of whatever they're, they're with. Now, because we have adhesion forces, you still have gravity pulling down on, so, oh, sorry, so that's a measuring cylinder. You'll still have gravity pulling down, but the adhesion forces hold the water to the side, okay? That's, that's adhesion, so, So adhesion forces stick. That's messy as a liquid to a container, another surface. Now, water the the forces of cohesion of you know they're they're strong enough, but the forces for mercury are much stronger and much much stronger than than the adhesion forces from mercury. So with mercury, you get a meniscus that looks like this. Um, the surface tension is holding it together around the edge, just causing this shape. Um, so you've got a giant droplet inside the thing, inside the measuring cylinder. Now, a surfactant, last thing, we're almost on our way, a surfactant is anything that reduces surface tension. Indeed, surfactant means surface act 
16 a unit. Think about what that means. Um, tomorrow we're going to play with surface with the uh, surface tension of water. Uh, we will use the easiest surfactant we have, which is a a detergent, and yeah. So that'll be our experiment tomorrow.